Hi everyone, can you guys hear my voice? Okay, now is 3 p.m. sharp, so I will start the today webinar. First of all, I would like to thanks for your participation on our today webinar. Before we proceed further, I would like to briefly go through the topic and agenda of our today webinar. As you know, the topic of today webinar will be the recurring sales invoice. Now, let us have a look of the agenda. The first agenda of today will be the overview of recurring sales invoice. In this part, we will understand the advantage of recurring sales invoice and how it will be helpful for your current business flow. Well, the second agenda of today's webinar will be the standard process flow of recurring sales invoice in current Microsoft Dynamic Net. The third agenda will be the simulation of sample scenario, which means that we will do the simulation together with the sample scenario for your better understanding. The fourth agenda will be the lesson learned. In this part, we will review once again what we have learned today and what shall be concern during the setup and application of recurring sales invoice. Lastly will be the Q&A section, where you are feel free to ask or raise any of your doubts that related to the topic of today's webinar. Now, let us move on to the overview of recurring sales invoice. Why use recurring sales invoice? This is because recurring sales invoice help users to reduce their workload for those sales invoice that they might need to do it monthly or periodically. Furthermore, it also helps to prevent users from miss out any monthly or periodic transaction. Now, let us go to the second agenda of today's webinar, which will be the standard process flow of recurring sales invoice in current Microsoft Dynamic Net. The first stage that we will go through is sales contract. For example, if we have signed up a sales contract with a specific customer for a year, then we will require to access to the Microsoft Dynamic NAV and set up the standard sales code for the specific contract. Afterward, we are required to assign the standard sales code that we have created to the specific customer card. Once all of the setup had completed as the periodic activity, User will need to run the create recurring sales invoice function on every month end or periodically. Then the sales invoice will be automatically created if it was within the validate. Well, we will discuss further on how to define the validate during the simulation letter. That's all for the standard process flow in current Microsoft Dynamic Net. Now, let us have a look of the sample company background that we are going to use for the simulation letter. The company that we are going to use later is Kronos Group. Kronos Group is a bicycle manufacturing company that running the business by assembly the bicycle for selling. Furthermore, Kronos Group is also having several properties under their company name which allow them to collect rental money. Now, let us move on to the first scenario of today's webinar. The first scenario will be, we have signing a contract with the customer where they agree to buy 10 units of bicycle per month from our company for a year. Well, the sales invoice will be billing to the customer by monthly basis. So, now us, let us go to the Microsoft Dynamic Nav and do the simulation together. Give me a moment so I switch the screen. Okay, the first step that we have to do to in order to set up the standard sales code is we are required go to the top right hand corner and go to the search engine and type the standard sales code. Once we have typed the standard sales code, the related link will be dropped down. So we are required to click the related link. And a page of the standard sales code list will be list out and 
In order to create a new standard sales code for the specific contract, we are required to go to the home tab in the ribbon and click new function and a patch of the standard sales line card will be propped out. Based on the scenario that we are showing in the PowerPoint slide just now, this will be related to the contract for the bicycle selling. So the code I will just type bicycle and the description user might type it accordingly based on the user preference and requirement. So for this one, you just type bicycle contract 2019. This means that we are actually signing the contract with the customer on 1st of January 2019 until end of December 2019. Well, the next thing that we have to set up is the currency code. One thing the user have to take note when set up the standard sales line card is the currency code in the standard sales line card have to be tally with the currency code in the customer card that we are going to assign later. For example, if we put the currency code as US dollar, which means that the, let, the, the currency code in the customer card have to be US dollar as well, else an arrow will be prone. Now, let us go to the line tab and drop down the type list and we shall suppose to see there is a several option available for the user select. Well, in this scenario, we are using bicycle so we have to choose the type as item and drop down the item number to select the bicycle as the item number 1000 and the description will be automatic fill in from the item card. And the quantity will be the 10 pieces. Okay, another thing to take note here is when the type equal to item, users are not allowed to fill in the amount. Okay, so I will try to type in an amount so an arrow will prompt. Because when the type equal to item, the amount means the unit price of the item will be based on the pricing set up in the item card. So another thing is, if user would like to do some remark, for example, the sales contract number or some feed, uh, criteria, user might go to the description column and type it accordingly. For example, I will make a remark for the sales contract number. So I will just type sales contract number 123. Okay, means that once I run the create recurring sales invoice function letter, this remark will also automatically flow through to the sales invoice with automatically generated by the system. That's all for the setup of the standard sales line card. The sec so we can just click OK to leave this page. The second step that we are going to do now is assign the standard sales line code to the customer card. So, in order to go to the customer card, same, we can just go to the top right hand corner and use the search engine and type customer. And a list of the customer related page will be prompt out, so we just click the related link and a customer list page will be shown. So, user might select any customer that they would like to assign the standard sales code. So, for this scenario, we will take customer 10,000, the Canon group, and just click edit to open up the customer card. When we access the customer card, we have required to go to the navigate on the ribbon and click the recurring sales line function. And a patch of recurring sales line will be shown. So there will be a server field available for user to do the setup accordingly. The first field that we're going to do now is drop down the code fields and there is a list of the standard sales code that we have set up just now. Bicycle will be shown. So we will just choose the bicycle. And okay, for the value from that and the value to that is actually the value that for the contract. Means that for the scenario that we mentioned just now, this contract will be from 1st of January 2019 until end of December 2019. So means that the value from that has to be 1st of January 2019 and value to that should be end of December 2019.
2019, which means that if I try to run the recurring sales invoice function letter, if the debt is not within the contract period, the system won't help me to generate the sales invoice automatically. Well, the system will only help me to generate the sales invoice when the order debt in the create recurring sales invoice function is within the valid debt. Well, now will be the payment method code and the payment term code. This one user can set up accordingly based on the user preference. So for this one, maybe we will use cash. So, okay, cash payment and payment term code. User can also select based on the user preference. So I will use cash on delivery. Another field will be the block. This field, if I user would like to block this specific recurring sales line during the debt range, means that maybe after a half year, customer require to cancel the contract or user will require to create a new standard sales code for the new, uh, new contract. So user might take the block fields in the recurring sales line setup. If the broker field had been ticket means that recurring sales line would automatic help us to create the sales invite. So we, if we untick it, so later if we insert the order that and the posting that, the system will automatic help us generate the sales invite. So since we will need it to generate the sales invite for us, for our simulation letter, so we will untick the block field and just click OK to cross the page. Another thing that I mentioned just now, we have to ensure that the currency code in the standard sales line card have to be tally with the currency code in the customer card. So we have to go to the invoicing tab for the customer card and view the currency code. As you can see, the currency code in this customer card is known as MYR, which Malaysia Ringgit. But the currency code that we set up just now for the bicycle is US dollar. This means that if we are trying to run the create recurring sales invoice function, system will prompt me an error and mention that the currency code have to be MYR. So now left has a try to generate the error for your better understanding. So we click OK. And we will just go to the search engine on the third right hand corner and run the create recurring Invoice. Okay, so the related link will be shown. So we click the link and a request page of the create recurring sales invoice function will prompt out. So now if we put the order date between the last debt range, for example, we put 31st of January 2019, 31st of January 2019, and the customer number we select 10,000, the customer that we have assigned the recurring sales code just now. If we click OK now, an arrow is supposed to prompt to notify us the currency code of the standard sales code is not matching with the currency code in the customer card. So let's have a try. So as you can see, the system prompts us an arrow message to notify us that the currency code must be equal to MYR in the standard sales code of bicycle as current value is US dollar. So there are two options that we can do in order to resolve the issue. First, we might change the currency code in the standard sales code or we can do the modification for the currency code in the customer card. So now let us do the second option. We change the currency code of the customer card to US dollar. So we just click edit to access to the customer card, of course. User might do it accordingly. For example, if your scenario is required to change the currency code in the standard sales code, you may do so. It's all, all totally based on your preference. As long as the currency code of the standard sales code has to be matching with the currency code in the customer card. Once the currency code is matched, we can just click OK to leave the page and we try to run the create recurring sales invite function once again. This time, we will put the order date in the date. So we put 31st of January 2019, 31st of January 2019. And we select the same customer as well. Okay, the Canon group. And we click OK. 
So system will notice by us that one invoice were created, which means that as long as the currency code is matching, the system will help us to generate the sales invoice automatically. Of course, user is allowed to assign the standard sales code for multiple customer, and we will do the simulation later on our next scenario. Now, in order to view the sales invoice they had created, we also go to the top right hand corner and type sales invoice. So, click the related link and a list of the sales invoice will be shown. As you can see, the sales invoice for the customer 10,000 have been automatically generated by the system. So, we just click edit to view the sales invoice. As you can see, the bicycle with the 10 pieces of quantity has been fulfilled and means the system will automatically generate for us and also the remark that I do in the standard sales line card are also bring forward. Well, the unit price is also will be based on the pricing setup that we had done in the item card. And the currency code will be US dollar and also the payment term code and the payment method code will also automatically forward to the sales invoice. Okay, after do the checking, user might do the preview posting before post the sales invite. So, we can know the entry that will be created if we do the actual posting for this sales invoice. Another thing that user have to take note here is, if user would like to system to help us to generate the poster sales shipment document when we post the sales invite, we are required to go to the sales and receivable setup. In the sales and receivable setup page, there is a function that we allow to take the checkbox is shipment on invoice. This means that a postal sales shipment will be automatically generated when we post the invoice. So as long as the user take this field, the system will automatically help us to generate a poster sales shipment when we post the sales invite. So we just click edit to go back to the sales invoice and do the actual posting. So system will also come out a message to ask us whether we want to go to the poster sales invite function. If we click yes, it will bring us to the poster sales invoice document. That's all for our first scenario. So now let us go to the second, uh, go back to the PowerPoint slide to view our second scenario of today's webinar. The second scenario will be company is rent out a property to the specific customer with one year contract and the renter will be collect by monthly basis, which means that the Kronos Group company are rent out their property to a customer and with the one year contract and the rental income will be automatic and direct being recorded into the chart of account so we have to use the GL account as the type so now let's go back to the Microsoft Dynamics screen and do the simulation together okay Sam, we just go to the top right hand corner and type standard sales code. So, just follow the step that we're doing just now, click new, and a standard sales line card will be prompt out. And this time, since it's for a renter, so we just use as renter A. So, of course, this code you can just type based on your own requirement. So for the description, I maybe will type render A as well. So for the currency code, as mentioned just now, it have to be matching with our customer card. For this time, we will still use US dollar. Well, for the type, since we want to directly record the rental revenue into our chart or account, the GR account, means that we are required to select the type as GL account and drop down to select the GL account number. Of course, this the GL account number will be based on the setup in your chart account. So we will use renter. So 6113 will be the number. 
okay quantity will be one month because we will build the customer by monthly basis so for the uom we will select one month as well okay as i mentioned just now if the type equal to item we are not allowed to type in the amount but this time the type that we are using is gl account so user is allowed to define the rental here so for example we are rent out the property by 2000 per month means that we are renting uh, renting the property to a customer with 2000 rental per month so uh, other than that user can also define the dimension based on the setup that we had do in the general ledger setup so this will be the dimension that you have set up in your general ledger setup later i will show so if we are going to click select the salesperson code we can just pull out the column and select the salesperson code accordingly so that's all for the setup of the standard sales line card for the gl account now let's go to the general ledger setup to view the dimension that we set up so give me a go to the top right hand corner and type general ledger setup so those view that we're showing just now is actually based on the dimension setup that we had did in the general ledger setup which means that the dimension view may be slightly different for different company so that's all for the dimension now after we set up the standard sales code we are required to assign the standard sales code to the specific customer card so same we will use the search engine on the top right hand corner and type customer and the list of the customer related link will be list out so we just click the related link so this time i will assign the standard sales code to another customer 20,000. so same i will just click edit to open the customer card and go to the navigate tab and click recurring sales line and drop down the code as what i showed just now and select the renter a and the value date we will use the same date so it will be from 1st of january 2019 until end of december 2019 and the payment turn code we will use cash as well and cash on delivery so it's just a basic setup as per showing just now after the setup had done we have to check again the currency code in the customer card to ensure that is matching with the currency code that we set up in the standard sales code as we can see the currency code for this customer is also MYR but we are using US dollar in our standard sales line card so this time we have to draw down the list and change it to us dollar in order to create the sales invoice so once the setup is done we just click ok okay now let us um, actually in standard nav there are two methods that we can assign the standard sales card sales code to the customer card one we can do it in the inside the customer card and second we can do it customer list in the customer list we just go to the navigate tab and you shall supposed to see there is a function called standard customer sales code it's actually going to the same page so this is the two place where user can set up the standard customer sales code okay now let us do the testing on the valid that means as we can as you can see the valid that they put here is from 1st of january until end of december so which means that if the order that and the posting that they will do in the create recurring sales invoice function is out of the dead range the system not supposing me to help us create the sales invoice automatically now let us have a try then we just go to the top right hand corner and type recurring sales invoice and click the related function this time we will put the order that and the posting that out of the range if we put it at the 31st of January 2012, 2020, sorry. So the posting date also we put it 31st of January 2020, which means that it has already out of the available debt range. 
So this night we will put customer number 20,000. So if we click OK, system not supposedly help us to create the sales invoice. So as you can see, zero invoice were created, which means that if the debt range is out of the valid debt that we set up in the recurring sales line, system won't help us to create the sales invoice automatically. But for your info, the recurring sales invoice function is actually validate the contract period that we set up in the recurring sales line based on the order debt, which means that if we put the order debt within the debt range but the posting debt out of the debt range, the system will still help us create the sales invoice. For example, if I put 30 of November 2019 and the posting debt is still 31st of January 2020, which means that the order debt is still within the contract period but the posting debt already out of the valid debt. So the system is actually will still help us generate the sales invoice because the validation that we standard NAV used to validate the valid debt in the recurring sales line is actually based on the order debt. So we click OK. So as you can see, the system already helped us automatic generate a sales invoice. So if you click OK, we just go to the top right hand corner and go to the sales invoice page to overview the sales invoice generated by the system. As you can see, there is a sales invoice has been generated for the customer 20,000. And as we can see here, the posting debt and the document debt, the document debt is based on the order debt that we set up there. And the posting debt will be based on the posting debt that we define in the create recurring sales invoice function. So the GL account for the renter have been created and the amount 2000 US dollar, the currency code and the payment term code is also bring forward here. Before we pause, the same action we can do here is click preview posting to overview those entry that will be created once we post the sales invoice. Then we just post the sales invoice. That's all for the second scenario. Now let us go to the third scenario. So we go back to the PowerPoint slide to have a look on our third scenario of today. Assign multiple standard sales code to a customer. What will happen if we assign multiple standard sales code to a customer? There will be a scenario that a company might have a multiple contract to a single customer then we might require to set up a multiple standard sales code to a single customer. So how Navision will cater that? So let us do the simulation in the Microsoft Dynamic Nav. So same thing, we can go to the standard sales code to create the new standard sales code for the specific customer or it's actually there are several lists here. So we will use the two standard sales code that we have created just now and assign it to a single customer. So we will go to the customer list. And this time we will go back to the first the customer, the Canon group. And instead of doing the setup in the customer card, this time we will do the setup in the customer list. So we just click standard customer sales code here. And this time we will assign the renter A to the specific customer with the correct valid debt and valid to debt payment term code. That's all for the setup. In fact, user can also review again the standard sales code before complete the setup. We can just go to the home tab and click the card function and the related sales line card will be prompt out for user to review once again. You just need to select any standard sales code that which you would like to review. That's all for the recurring sales line setup. So we just click OK to cross the page. And we will just go to the create recurring sales invoice function. And we will define the order date. For example, 31st of August 2019. August 2019. 
and we will select the customer 10,000 which we have assigned the multiple standard sales code to the specific customer so we just click OK as you can see two invoices were created which means that system will automatically help us to generate multiple invoices when there are multiple standard sales code to a single customer so we just go to the sales invoice page as you can see we are able to overview those sales invoices that have been created so once review again we just pause it so this one will be just as the same what we are doing just now so we just pause it okay now we will go to another scenario here is we go back to the customer card actually we are allowed to assign the multiple standard sales code to multiple customer card so for example if we use another customer again and click edit to check again the currency code for this customer this one also MYR so we just change to US dollar and go to navigate tab and assign the standard sales code to the customer card so this time we also do the same bicycle with the 1st of January 2019 31st of December 2019 and this cash cash on delivery okay that's all for this setup so as you can if you notice just now when we run the create recurring sales invoice function we are keep on filtering the customer number what if we did not filter the customer number for example we put this time we put uh, end of september 2019 end of september 2019 but this time we are not doing the filter for the customer number what will happen as per NAF standard as long as we didn't do any filter which means that system will automatically run the best job for the all customer who have been assigned with the recurring sales line means once we have done the setup in the recurring sales line and the valid debt is still within the debt range so the system will automatically create the sales invoice for the all customer so we click ok so as you can see four invoices were created means that two for the the Canon group one for Selangorian and one for the Metatop Malaysia Sadiam Prat and we can just go to the sales invoice page to overview again those sales invoices were being created okay that's all for the scenario that we're going to present today so now let's go back to the PowerPoint slide okay now let us review once again the lesson that we learned today first will be the application of recurring sales invite in order to use the recurring sales invite we are required to set up of standard sales code once the setup of standard sales code has done we have to assign the standard sales code to the customer and run the create recurring sales invite by monthly or periodically then that we also have to take note that the currency code in the standard sales code must be tally with the currency code in the customer card besides that in standard sales code when item type equal to item user is not allowed to define the amount because unit price of the item will be based on the pricing setup in the item card last will be when we run the create recurring sales invoice function the value debt will be defined based on the order debt. So that's all for our today webinar and hope you learned something today. And now will be our Q&A section. Please feel free to ask if you have any query that related to the topic of today webinar. Uh, for your guys information, uh, uh, actually I have included some slides by the print screen which means that you can actually download this powerpoint slide from our crt training server so you can review or for you can reference on for your own review uh, means you can download the powerpoint slide from our crt training server and you can review it step by step i just hide it inside the powerpoint slide so you can just download the slide and review once again all the steps 
So if there is no any further query, that's all will be our today webinar. And once again, thanks for your time and participation. If you have time, please help to do the survey in our CRT training server. Thank you. Thank you.